you all know why you're here, and you should know what you have to do. Let me stress that there can be no margin for error. People have been getting very careless lately. That carelessness has cost this organization a lot of money and a lot of trouble. It can also lead to our clients questioning our reliability, which in this case could have had very serious consequences. Those of you who have any knowledge of the Morocco deal would be wise to erase it from your minds permanently. Our clients are not the kind of people who accept failure. That's why this operation has to be a success. The police have been getting a bit cocky lately, and it will be true to say that they have caused us a few minor discomforts, mainly due to the carelessness I mentioned earlier. But I'm glad to be able to say that all is now in hand in that department. We may have to wind down activities in certain areas, but it's only a temporary measure. Prudence. Dealing with the police is one thing. However, our clients are a much tougher proposition. Mistakes can be fatal. I'm not interested in any excuses. Just get the job done and get it done right. Okay? Right, you can go now. Should have let me go along, Mr. Mansell. You must be joking. This operation requires speed and precision, two areas in which you are singularly lacking. But I know him. He trusts me. More fool him. Look, Brad, he's up the creek without a paddle. We've done a deal with his solicitor. His insurance is blown. Poor old Dan. Don't waste your sympathy. He won't even have time to know what day of the week it is. As far as he knows, he's been sprung. As far as the police and the public are concerned, he's on the run again. You can forget Mr. Watts. He's a dead man. Come on, Watts, we ain't got all day. Oh, what's the matter? Can't you wait to get rid of me? We've been trying to check your belongings, haven't we? Wouldn't want you to think we'd tamper with your precious knickknacks. And I'd best look after you, haven't we? I feel like a second family to you. I hope you appreciate that. Goodbye, Watts. Got you a taxi, Watts? I like that one, yeah. Yeah? Star treatment. Only prisoner going out today are going to be handcuffed between me and Mr. Morris all the way. Very cosy. I feel my job's been made worthwhile. All those hours I've spent trying to show you the error of your ways. Been like a mother to you, haven't I? It's my your bum when you step out of line. Wipe your nose, dry your tears. You'd really love me to give you a smack in the mouth, wouldn't you? Go on. Make me dear. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction, but I'm going to get you one day where it hurts. Talks cheap one. You ought to jack the lad. King of the dung heap, not me. You can't see yourself for what you are, can you? Because without this place behind you, you're nothing. And the mugs near now, if they touch you, you'll pace them around the walls just so you can walk tall. Tell us something I don't know. In 20 years' time, you're just going to be like stone. Too scared to go outside in the real world. You wouldn't last two minutes. Aye, where are you going to be? Banged up in some nick, I suppose. Don't count on it. No, you're going to hit the big time, aren't you? Come back in a roll and rub me nose and it will have heard it all before, Watts. Yeah, wherever I'll be. I won't be living life second hand. I won't need to impress a bunch of sex starved mugs with imaginary towels about imaginary birds in imaginary hotel rooms. Because that's the difference between me and you, Mr. McLeish. I'm not frightened of life. I just go for it and I live it. Get through that door, Watts. 